Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love, and we worship you, crying out, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross, salvation to his church, and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he will give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. <clears throat> we worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and you worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just, who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you, and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out, on Friday the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday a lance pierced his holy side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow forth. On Friday he was crucified with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace, clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory, and in its light see you, the true Bridegroom. In your grace make us and all the faithful departed, worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Sacrifice yourself for us, we give you thanks. O incense of forgiveness, we adore you, for you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, Reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection. Raised us by your ascension and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Amen. Aloha, Kaddishat, Chayyelatona, Kaddishat, Amen. 
Church is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose. Christ, who died for his people, conquered death to give new life. Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a clear conscience, wishing to act rightly in every respect. I especially ask for your prayers that I may be restored to you very soon. May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus, our Lord, furnish you with all that is good, that you may do his will. May he carry out in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to bear with this message of encouragement, for I have written to you rather briefly. I must let you know that our brother Timothy has been set free. If he comes soon, I shall see you together with him. Greetings to all your leaders and to all the holy ones, Those from Italy send you greetings. Grace be with all of you. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, We offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. 
From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, After this, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this manner. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him in answer, We will also come with you. And so they went out, and they got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, My sons, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it. And they were not able to pull it in because of the number of the fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard this, that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garments, for he was lightly clad, and he jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. And when they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went over, and he dragged the net to shore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net had not been torn. And Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized that it was the Lord. And Jesus came over, and he took the bread, and he gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. This is the truth, peace be with you. who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Many of you will have noticed, perhaps on the calendars, that next Sunday for the Orthodox is Easter, May 2nd. And many of you have probably noticed over the years that oftentimes the Orthodox churches have a different date of Easter, anywhere to up a month being later. Sometimes it corresponds on the same, and there's many reasons for that. But the main importance here, the point is, is that in 2,000 years, the Church of Christ has never celebrated the resurrection on the same day, all the members of the church, after 20 centuries, to this day, and at first we would look at that and we'd say, well, it looks kind of sloppy. How is it 
that in 2,000 years you can't agree on when we're going to celebrate the resurrection. You know, at Vatican II even, it was suggested at the council that they would just set a date, like the second Sunday in April. It will always just be the second Sunday in April. And then in the discussions, of course, it was realized, well, this will just add a third option and another bit of confusion as to when we celebrate the resurrection. The confusion is not there for sloppy reasons. The confusion is the result of the fact that all of the Christians take the calculation of time and the measurement of time fundamentally and profoundly important. We don't think about this anymore because you just go to those bookstore or to Hallmark stores and buy your calendar and hang it in the kitchen, if you do that anymore. I don't think your kids do that, they just use their phones. But for the people who still have cloth calendars or paper calendars hanging in their homes, we don't think about what it takes to calculate these days. And at the Council of Nicaea in 325, it was deputed to the Bishop of Alexandria in Egypt. They're the smart people. That was the academic world. You're the ones that are the astronomers. You're the ones that have the observatory. You calculate and you tell us when we're going to celebrate Easter. And that worked for a while. The reason why this is of such importance, and I'm talking about it during these weeks, that we're considering what does the new Sunday mean? What is the Sunday? Is because of the great importance of the eternal covenant, God's plan of redemption, but it's realized in time. That the hidden one of all eternity became incarnate through the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in time. And this is why to this day, one of the great problems that we have in any kind of attempt to bring the churches into some kind of form of greater communion, one of them is the calendar. And even amongst the Orthodox, they don't agree. Because many of the Orthodox at the beginning of the 20th century adopted the calendar that you know and is hanging in your kitchen the so-called Gregorian calendar, because it was just astronomically calculated better in the 16th century. And because it was 1582, <clears throat> the Pope just said, all right, on October 15th, well, we're all going to go from October 4th to October 15th. And, and in 1582, they just skipped a week and a half. And because at that point in 1582, some of the countries were in full revolt against the Church of Christ, they didn't accept it. England didn't accept the Gregorian calendar until the 18th century. So if you, any of you do early American history, it's not always actually easy to figure out the date because the early calendar they're using in the 1600s and the seven, early 1700s, they're using the old Julian calendar just like the Orthodox because who's gonna to listen to the Pope? Even if scientifically they understand that it's the better calculation, it's not the point. The Pope imposed it. And the Russians didn't accept the calendar that you use until the Bolshevik Revolution. The Bolsheviks brought in the modern calendar. And then, and also in the beginning of the 20th century, the Greek Orthodox, a number of them began to adopt the Gregorian calendar which then caused among the Orthodox faithful to say, but that's not tradition. And here's the principle. Because time is sacred, because eternity entered into time, the calendar itself is now an expression, as St. Paul speaks in the letter to the Hebrews, is an expression of the eternal covenant. And that calendar requires then the church of God herself not just simply the Bishop of Rome, but the Church of God herself in ecumenical council to make these decisions about the sacredness of time and the measurement of the calendar. Now, I'm not drawing you out just simply to give you a history lesson. I want you to understand the profound complexity behind these questions, and it's not stupid. Because a lot of people, their reaction in the modern world is, that's just dumb, why don't you just, it's just the calendar. You bought it at Barnes & Noble, it's fine. Look, what's the problem? It's on your phone. 
But it's because of the notion that the Christian gospel, and I've mentioned to you this numerous times, Catholicism is not a philosophical school. It is, not a series of pro- it is not a series of propositions offered to you whether you think it makes sense or not. It is a proclamation of eternity in time. And therefore, it is a life which is actually embraced and lived, or it is nothing. The so-called cafeteria Catholics who just pick and choose what they feel like believing and picking things from the catechism, they're simply not Catholic. Just because you agree, as St. James says in his epistle, just because you follow nine out of ten commandments by choosing to violate one, he says you violate all of them. Because it's not about ten propositions given to you whether you think adultery is a good idea this year or not. It is the voice of God who has told us these things in time. And therefore, it's the voice of God that you reject by rejecting one part of it. And that's why the catechism and the declaration and definitions and clarity of teaching the gospel message has always been fundamental and essential to the church of Christ. It's only in the modern world where they're like, well, whatever your heart tells you. That's never been the proclamation of the gospel. And so it's just one of the details of why it has been so profoundly complex Even the calendar causes us problems. For heaven's sakes, of the five Orthodox churches just in the state of Maine, one, the Russians in Richmond have excommunicated the other four Greek Orthodox churches. So you see, and they're old calendarists. I don't know what the other parishes are using, but I know that the Russians outside of the, the the Rokor, Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, are definitely old calendar. They are your Orthodox traditionalist. They're intense. And in many ways, which is quite excellent, because there is a defense of the apostolic faith. And so it's an important thing. And today's sermon is really for all you young people. Young people are not a prominent part of the Church of Christ in North America or in Europe. And there's many, many reasons for that. And part of it is, is that we're not actually teaching you how to think intelligently about your faith. You have to think about these questions because you are living now at present time in which there is a conscious effort to dismantle the calendar as you know it. When I was a seminarian in the 1980s, I had the good fortune of making a pilgrimage to the Holy Lands. And so in the late 1980s, when I was there, it's the first time I came across this famous CE abbreviation, a common era. Of course, as a child, like everybody else, you just learn, well, it's 1968 AD, it was AD. In fifth grade, you didn't think about AD. They just said, well, this is the way we do it, and then the rest of it's BC. All right, fine, whatever. But of course, among the Catholics, they would know that AD stands for Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. Sometimes you'll see other abbreviations throughout the centuries. Sometimes you'll see things like ARH, Anno Redemptionis Hominis, so the year of the redemption of man. You'll have different abbreviations, but they're all about the fact that in 2021, this is completely calculated by the coming of the eternal God into time. I told you about the funny episode when I was in Tibet, and I have this little Tibetan guide with me who is charming as I'm gasping for air because we're at 12,000 foot elevation and there's no oxygen here. But this young Buddhist He asked me at one point, is Christianity old? And I thought, well, this is a funny question. I mean, I understood why he was asking it, because in the Chinese and Asiatic cultural mindset, something is important if it's ancient. I mean, he knows that Christianity exists. I'm in my cassock standing in front of him. They were calling me a Christian lama. They know that it exists, so his question was simply, well, is it old? And I looked at him and I said, in 2005, it's 2005 years old, which was the year I was traveling. 
And he looked at me confused. And I said, you don't know that the calendar has anything to do with Christianity, do you? Now, this was not a surprise. After all, he's a Tibetan Buddhist. He didn't know his Buddhism very well. We had to kind of catechize him on the Buddhism and then explain to him why Christianity was true. But that's a different sermon. But he had no idea of the calendar, and this is consciously done. But I wasn't surprised that he, as a Tibetan Buddhist, would have no idea that the calendar had anything to do with our Lord. It's when I meet Catholics who have no understanding of the sacredness of time, because we have lost the doctrine of the new Sunday. We do not understand what it means. And I remember one of the people going out, one of our new Maronites who have been here for the last year, and going out made it a very personal and direct intention to say, Happy Mercy Sunday! And I said, Divine Mercy, that's beautiful. I said, it was New Sunday centuries before we ever had St. Faustino. He looked at me confused and he walked out of the church. You will always be made Maronites here. This is why we exist. And the notion of this Sunday, so that when I was in Israel, I came across this common era, which again was not surprising, shocking to me as a seminarian, because I didn't know what it was, until you realize it's the conscious effort not to use AD, because of course, as a Jew, you don't accept that Jesus is the Messiah. So he's certainly not Lord. So you have to come up with a different terminology than AD. AD is horrifying. And any of you who read academic books, that's been the way it's been since the 90s. I'm always happy when I find a professor, especially if they're from a place like Georgetown, for what little residue of Catholic faith remains there, that when they write that they actually put in some notation using AD and BC. Because after all, I do not expect the Catholic population or Christian population in general to lose any kind of notion of the sacredness of the time and the calendar. So I'm dragging this out over the weeks for you to understand what the sacredness of the first day of the week is. And that's why I said this, these sermons are actually for you young people. The rest of us who are teetering towards the grave, well, you know, hey, our time is done. You are the ones who have to carry the baton and the torch until the end of the 21st century. And if you don't, woe be to you. Your parents and your grandparents, not your parents here, but the parents in general and the grandparents have not done a great job of transmitting the gospel in the last 70 years. But that's not an excuse for you to drop the ball. And the only way you can continue on is when you think clearly and fundamentally and understand as a Catholic what your faith actually means. So you need to be able, proverbially over that beer at the tavern on a Friday evening, explain to your pagan college mates what AD in the calendar actually means. You don't talk about the gospel. Just talk about what these things actually have meant culturally and historically. If you can't even talk at that level, you're never going to be able to communicate the faith. Because you have to start at that level of a historical and cultural context. And so this is why the second thing that is also taking place is the reworking of the week. Many of you may have come across calendars already. In your, your phone, your computer in your pocket already asks you, is the first day of the week that you want on your calendar Sunday or Monday? In Europe, it's already officially there. This was introduced to me because I've lived around the world for years. And most of what had been at one time the Christian world has already apostatized. And they have rejected Sunday as being the first day of the week. For the first time in 2,000 years of Western culture. And they make Monday the first day of the week. And again, most people are going to go, eh, who cares? Father's neurotic. Why does he tell us all of these like pity little details? Because the new Sunday is precisely about the first day of the week, and that will become clear next week. So someone consciously, I'm not saying that the new international calendar that was also developed in the 1980s, so you see this wasn't yesterday. This was not organized by some revolutionary Marxist BLM group to destroy the calendar. This has been going on under your nose for a very long time already. We remember the 80s, don't we? That was 
Getting rich is the purpose of life, right? We've done that since the 80s. That's right. Greed is good. And so in that cultural milieu, you had a whole movement coming out of Europe, which has now developed what is known as the international calendar. You can Google it. In which Monday is the first day of the week officially. How they count the weeks, how they count the days is a different thing that's part of the international calendar. But they specifically made it that Monday is the first day of the week. And again, with these details that don't seem to really matter much, but it's an importance of understanding. But in these calendar, these calendrical measurements, the same way people who are like, well, whether I go to Mass on Sunday doesn't matter, that is also absurd. It is the day of the resurrection. It is recorded in the scriptures and the first generation that they gather on the first day. And so these things have a great importance, and I especially want the young people to embrace the Catholic faith intelligently, not emotionally in some kind of doofusy, sugary, saccharine stuff. That's not Christianity. Feelings are part of our religion, of course. I was talking to a couple people a couple weeks ago, and they're like, it's so beautiful here. It's, it's sensual. I thought, well, yes, in the good term of the word, it's sensual, meaning the beauty of the words of the prayers, of the hymns. The beauty of, hopefully, the altar, the ceremonies, and, of course, the incense. Everything surrounds you. The bowing to icons. It engages our body and all of our senses. Yes, in the fullest sense, it is sensual. But part of that sense is also the measurement of time that we live in. And be aware of what is happening to the world that you live in. That is the best thing you can do for your great-great-grandchildren. Because when they're even a smaller minority living in North America of Christians, they will say, thanks be to God for my grandfather, my great-grandfather. He was so intelligent, he was brilliant. And he taught my grandmother so well the faith. And she communicated that to me. I never met my great-grandfather, but thanks be to God that he lived and was intelligent as a Catholic because he allowed me in the year 2135 to teach my children that faith intelligently. And when we understand that, then we understand that we'll finish with when St. Paul says, I pray. So the first part I gave you, the one who raised Jesus, the sh chief shepherd, the shepherd of all the flock, by the blood of the eternal covenant, that's inserted in the phrase in which he says, now the God of peace equip you in everything good, give you every grace that you need to accomplish the supernatural life, that you may do his will, and that he working within you. This is not your task. This is God working within this generation. That he, the God of peace, working within you, that which is pleasing in his sight. That is the full sensual Catholicism, engaged, body, mind, soul, intelligence, everything for the honor and service of God, and hence, by that way, the salvation of our souls. May God give us this strength and may the God of peace fortify us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him in all things we may be. For our salvation and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our salvation, he was crucified and conscious power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the court of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the gods. We believe in one holy Catholic. An apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You have the sheets in your pews for the transfer hymn of the resurrection. Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation upon us, we call upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Mark, the Evangelist. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
Continue with the anaphora of St. Mark the Evangelist on page 835. 835. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty Father, your true and holy love, may we be bound by your divine love and find a joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss, that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed before upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, love and faith that are pleasing to God. before you and ask that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Holy God and Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God, the Father, maker of all creation. With your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim.
Father Almighty, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, when we had strayed from you by transgressing your law, you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By his saving passion he restored us to our original inheritance, and he gave us life by his divine blood. Whenever you observe these commandments, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Jesus Christ, we remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth, and baptism, your saving passion and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy on us in your kindness and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them.
May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the pardon of faults, the honor, opening, and strengthening of your holy church, and the protection of her children from all sin. And may these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, exalt your holy church established throughout the world to protect your shepherds of the true faith in peace and security all the days of their lives, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishar of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name. Bless those who are near and bring back those who are far. Visit the sick and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed that they may live in your fear. And reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church. Grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them, so that they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and the displaced of your flock, and be a refuge for sinners and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks, to those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on mountaintops and in the caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, the apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen the archdeacon and first martyr, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Mark, and all the saints, may we join their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysius, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also all those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
O Lord, and you are the pleasing oblation who offered your son for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you, to you be glory forever. O God the Father, you are merciful and compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now that we may be renewed as your spiritual children so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of thy Lord. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it through Christ Jesus our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, bless us in the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for your love. O Lord our God, to you be glory
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. O compassionate mercy, O Lord. O lover of all
O God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are adored and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.